good morning. This is the general computational biology session. My name is Birte Kia. I have been the abstract area chair for the, this session this year. Uh, we have three pre proceedings presentations at the beginning that were assigned to the general computational biology area. And then we will continue with 14 more abstracts that have been selected for talks. I hope you will enjoy the day. And with that, I pass on to Dieter Beuler, who's going to introduce the first speaker. Yeah, the applause should be on, on Birte. So thank you. Uh, welcome. Good morning from my side as well. I have the honor to introduce the speakers for the proceedings presentations. The overarching topic of all three is network analysis. And the first speaker is Chris Su from graduate student from Luxembourg University, and she will speak on controlling large Boolean network with single step perturbations. We're looking forward. Thanks for the introduction. I'm happy to be here to present our work about uh, controlling larger Boolean networks with uh, single step perturbations. We also call it uh, instantaneous perturbations. So I will, start with, I will start with some background information. Systems biology aims to provide a comprehensive interpretations of cellular behaviors. Network reconstruction constructs mathematical models from biological data. This allows us to analyze or control biological systems with formal reasoning and tools. Network analysis helps to understand the biological processes. We are working on network control. We want to identify drug targets for curing diseases. Among several modeling frameworks, Boolean networks are quite popular. They are simple and yet able to capture the important dynamical properties of biological systems. A Boolean network consists of a set of binary-valued nodes, and each node is assigned with a Boolean function, which determines the value of the node as the next uh, time step. The nodes represent the genes, so one means the gene is expressed, zero means not. The Boolean functions describe the interactions between the genes. For this toy example, there are three nodes, x1, x2, and x3. These are the Boolean functions of the nodes. And the dynamics of a Boolean network can be described as a transition system. And the transition system can be computed based on the Boolean functions together with the update modes. There are several update modes. And we are particularly interested in this asynchronous update mode, which means that at each time step, one node is randomly chosen to update according to its Boolean function. This updating is considered more realistic because it allows biological processes uh, to happen at different time scales. And this figure is the transition system of the toy example I showed in the previous slides. Each, uh, each node is a binary string representing a state. I'd like to draw your attention to the size of the state space. This uh, toy example has only three nodes, and they are 2 to power 3, 8 states. So imagine a network with uh, hundreds or thousands of nodes. Their state space is exponential in the size of the network. This infamous state explosion problem is the biggest challenge to analyze or control large-scale networks. And the long-run behavior of a Boolean network are represented, uh, represented as attractors. Attractors are hypothesized to characterize cell phenotypes. For this toy example, there are two attractors, A1 and A2. We can see that the system will eventually settle down to one of the attractors. And once the system reaches one of the attractor, it can never escape unless perturbed externally. 
and different with uh, the control of other uh, networks like social networks, the control of biological networks focuses, uh, focuses on only attractors. So our goal is to identify a minimal set of nodes, the perturbation of which can drive the system from undesired, unhealthy attractors to desired and uh, healthy attractors. There are mainly three control problems. They are, uh, I, will, I will explain later. They are all special cases of this all pairs control. So well, what is the all pairs control? If you look at the table, in the first uh, column, we list uh, a set of source attractors, means uh, uh, undesired or unhealthy attractors. And in the first row, we list uh, a set of desired and healthy attractors. So a control is called uh, all pairs control if for any pair of the source and target attractors and for any state in the source attractor, there exists uh, a subset, the application of which can drive the system from the source state to the target attractors. If there's only one source attractor and one target attractor, we call it source target control. If there are a set of source attractors and only one target attractor, we call it target control. If both the set of source attractors and the set of target attractors include all the attractors of the system, we call it full control. Now I have explained the three control problems Depending on how long the control is applied, we can have instantaneous perturbations. Oh, sorry. We can have instantaneous perturbations, temporary perturbations, and the permanent perturbations. The instantaneous perturbations means that we only apply the control, then we release it. So the advantage of this kind of perturbations is that they are the least invasive. And also, they don't require the ob uh, observability of the system. In our previous work, we have um, developed efficient methods to solve the source target control problem with different kinds of perturbations. In this work, I will mainly talk about our method for the minimal target control and the minimal full control with instantaneous perturbations. As I mentioned before, these two problems are just special cases of all pairs control. So in this work, we developed a method to solve the minimal all pairs control problem. And by changing the input settings, this algorithm or this method can solve the minimal target control and the minimal full control as well. Before introducing our method, I'd like to introduce a very important concept, uh, which is very crucial for almost all our control methods. It's called the Bayesian O1 attractor. We know that attractors are steady state. The Bayesian O1 attractor includes all the states from which there only exist passes to this attractor. For this toy example, the Bayesian O each attractor are marked with the dashed lines. Let's take A2 as an example. You see the three states in the basin of A2. There only exist uh, passes to A2, which means that from any state in the basin of A2, it will eventually reach A2, and they cannot reach A1. Based on this idea, it's very easy to understand our source target control method. So if we want to drive the system from A1 to A2, we only need to find a control that stirs the network to a state in the basin of A2, and then we can release the control. The spontaneous evolutions of the system will eventually guide the network to reach uh, the target. So for this case, we have three control that can drive the system from A2, A1 to A2. If you are only interested in the minimal one, you can 
choose the, 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 the one with the least uh, perturbations. Similarly, we can also compute the, compute the source packet control that can drive the system from A2 to A1. Next, I will use this toy example to illustrate how our minimal all pairs control method works. This toy example has uh, two attractors, and the both are single state attractors. Um, since there are only two attractors, let's assume both the set of source, uh, both the set of source attractors and the set of target attractors include all the attractors of the system. So in order to compute a minimal all pairs control, the first step is to fill this table. Uh, if the source and target are the same, we don't need to control, uh, control any nodes, so it's empty set here. And for the other cell, we put all the source target control sets there for the respective source and target. So here we not only put the minimal ones, but also uh, all the possible ones. Based on the source target control method, we know how to do that already. And uh, the next step, we compute all the supersites, uh, all the supersites of this table, they are possible all pairs control. And uh, we sort them in ascending order based on their sizes. For this example, there are only two supersites. One includes node x1 and the node x2. The other include, uh, includes node x1, x2, and x3. And in order to find the minimal solution, we started with the smallest uh, supersite, uh, supersite, and uh, we uh, just verify one by one until we find a minimal solution. For this uh, simple case, the final solution is uh, node one and two. And uh, in our previous work, we have developed a very efficient methods to identify all the attractors of the network and uh, to compute the basin for each attractor. So it's not a big problem for us to fill this table. But the problem is, problem is that if a network is very large, in each cell, there may, have too, uh, there may be too many possible solutions. This will result in too many possible all pairs, uh, all pairs control sites to be checked. So it can be very expensive in both the computational time, but also the memory to compute the final result. So what, how, uh, to tackle this problem, we employed the divide and the conquer strategy. Instead of treating the entire network in one go, we divide the, num uh, the network into small partitions. Then we compute the minimal all pairs control sites for each partition. Afterwards, we combine the results to find a minimal all pairs control site for the entire network. As mentioned before, since target control and the full control are special cases of all pairs control, we change the input settings by setting the, uh, the set of target attractor as a single attractor, or by setting the set of source attractors and the set of target attractors as the entire attractors of the system, the algorithm can compute the minimal solution for both the target control and the full control problem. To evaluate our methods, we apply them to, uh, to several biological networks. In particular, we compare the performance of our minimal target control with the stable motif-based control. The difference between these two methods lies in the type of perturbations. Our method uses uh, instantaneous perturbations, while stable motif-based control use temporary perturbations. The temporary control may lead to less perturbations, but this normally temporary control needs uh, at least partial observability of the system. And uh, this table shows uh, the results of the target control. You can find the number of nodes and the number of attractors contained in each network. 
the largest network we tested has 188 nodes. These two columns describe the number of perturbations required by each method. We can see that the results are quite close, which demonstrating the effectiveness of our method. And also for even very large networks like, uh, like the last one, we only need to control four nodes. So this agrees with the empirical findings that the control of very few inputs can reprogram the dynamics of, the bi of a biological system. These two columns show the computational time. We can see that for most of the cases, our target control method can finish the computation within two seconds, which is uh, very efficient. And these are the results uh, of the full control. And we tested on, this, uh, on the same networks. Since there's uh, no method in the literature dealing with the exact same problem, so we didn't do any comparison. And this column shows the number of perturbations required by the full control. Of course, compared to the target control, full control needs to control more nodes. But still, compared to the size of the network, we can see that the number of perturbations required by the full control is still relatively small. And also, it's very efficient. To conclude, in this work, we have developed uh, efficient methods to solve the minimal target control and the minimal full control problem with instantaneous perturbations. We are currently working on developing a method to solve the minimal target control with temporary perturbations. And uh, actually, I don't think uh, there is one method that suits all kinds of uh, biological systems. So to, um, the, the idea is that we give a network, we compute all the possible solutions, maybe also incorporate the practical constraints, and we can provide all the solutions to biologists, and the biologist can choose the proper one based on the experimental settings. In the future, we also plan to extend our control methods to the control of probabilistic Boolean networks. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. Uh, the talk is open for questions. There's microphones or you just speak up. Uh -huh. Okay, so my question will be simple because you showed uh, some network and uh, showing some result. And, uh, no, no, you showed result for the network. I'm just wondering how you can get the network information. Uh, you mean the network? Yes. Uh, I normally, th there's, uh, there are some websites they people upload their networks. So and normally I find the website, I find the uh, network I'm interested, mm -hmm. I read the paper, mm -hmm. or I need uh, other Boolean functions. Yes. So another question maybe is, so for this is, uh, is it node, so what is the node? Is it a gene or something or the status? Uh, sorry, can so you? Here's a, you told me about the node, and so my the question is uh, what node means here? Oh, so. What those uh, nodes means? Yes. Depends on the networks. Yes. Some, uh, most uh, of the nodes are genes, but sometimes people also uh, use uh, proteins. And uh, even for some cases, they may put a cell phase, like apoptosis or cell cycle arrest as a node. Mm -hmm. so it depends on the networks. Uh, my question is about asynchronicity of the network. If we consider attractors only, asynchronicity, I think, doesn't affect, so the, but maybe it may affect the, uh, Basins. So my question is, what happens if your uh, method is applied to synchronous uh, Boolean network? 
uh, uh, our methods can be applied to synchronous case as well. But the, the, the method can be much simplified because the transition, uh, the transition system or a synchronous Boolean network is much uh, simpler. In each state, because you update all the nodes together, so in each state there's only one outgoing edge. But for asynchronous case, you can choose different nodes to update. So each node may have several outgoing edges. So our method works for asynchronous case. So your method is a kind of non-deterministic, and the, so how you evaluate if the, how can I say, in one case it reaches to attractor, in, in the other case it reaches not to attractor. So the, so you evaluate the worst case of the control? Uh, our uh, method guarantees the reachability of the target. So the, I, I, even which uh, edge is chosen, uh, so the, your method uh, can control to the attractor. I, I mean that your method is uh, non-deterministic, so, uh, so in all cases that you are controlled, uh, I can say, uh, leads uh, uh, old, old attractors to new attractors. I, I think so, uh, <laughs> because it's uh, non- the, <laughs> the, the, For asynchronous Boolean networks, the transition system is non-deterministic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because we use the Bayesian, the concept of Bayesian, mm -hmm. so once the, the control drives the system to a state in the Bayesian, and you release the control. From any state in the basin, eventually the system will reach the target. So we guarantee the 100% reachability okay. of the target. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> and we move on to the next talk, which is by Zayed Riza Mirash.